Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friend, to the voice of the eternal gospel. This is Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for, the, for your holy words. Help us, O oh Lord, not only to understand it, but to apply through the power of your Holy Spirit in our life, in the life of our friends out there. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we, um, in, in the previous program, we had to cut off, uh, we were um, in study, I was going to say debating, but it's a good debate. We're presenting how this uh, whole uh, situation is going to end over here in this earth. See, this is good news. This is the gospel. It's going to end with, a, with a, uh, 144,000, a great multitude, and... Everybody having, it says in Revelation 7, 9, is a white robes and palms in their hands. If I will ask you, Pastor Barry, what does the white robes represent? White robes is a symbol of Christ and his righteousness. Okay. It represents that in Revelation chapter 19. His character, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Revelation 19, the Bible tells us again. Well, do you want to read from 7, please? I will say verse 7. And let us be glad and rejoice yeah. and give honor to him, uh -huh. for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her, now notice it's dealing with the marriage of the what? Lamb. Uh -huh. And if you remember the story Jesus gave about the man in the wedding garment uh -huh. coming to a marriage, right. the marriage of the Lamb is when Jesus has finished his work as high priest in the sanctuary. And while he's there, we are invited as guests to the marriage in his time of judgment. Uh -huh. The Bible goes on and says here, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the what? Righteousness. Righteousness of the same. But what? Clean and what? White. white. And we find here that fine linen is for the, right, is the righteousness of the what? Saints. Mm -hmm. But the righteousness of the saints is actually the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible said, being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is the law of the righteousness of God, which is through faith, of faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. So isn't that a good news? So that the, the wife, the church, that is coming for is a, is a church that will be uh, uh, pure, a church that by the blood of Christ have uh, overcome sins in their life, a church that by the grace of Christ is walking in obedience to the commandments of God instead of the commandments of men. And it's a church. It's a special church, a group of people. Yes, um, the Also, an answer is in verse 14, uh -huh. where the question is, who are these that are arrayed in white robes? Uh -huh. And the uh, answer is, he said, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Um, Revelation 3 verse 5 says, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Uh -huh. And those that over, overcome and go through great tribulation are described in Revelation 15 verse 2 where John sees a people who have gotten the victory over the beast over the image, over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass. And uh, God's people will go through a time of trouble on this earth after everyone makes a decision whether to worship God and receive the seal of God or to worship man and receive the mark of the beast. Then probation closes, the seven last plagues fall, then Christ comes and the great multitude are resurrected taken to heaven with the 144,000, those that are standing when Jesus comes. See, I want our friends out there to, to take notice of the sequence of the event mm -hmm. that you just presented. Because, again, it's not that the church is taken first to heaven, and then all these things will come, the mark of the beast, the tribulation, the seven last plagues, and, and all that. See, the enemy is trying to deceive as many people as possible out there 
And I think our job is to bring the word of God openly to the people and allow the Holy Spirit to work in them. All right? Uh, why the palms in, the, in their hands? In Leviticus chapter 23, verse 40, uh, you, we will see in there, well, we don't have to read the whole chapter, of course. We don't have the time. But if, if you will read from uh, verse 33, I, we're not going to read it. I'm just talking to our friends out there. From 33 on, you'll see that every year when the Israelites were to celebrate the Feast of the Tabernacle for seven days, you know, they, were, they went out of their tents. And they will carry on in verse 40. Read it, please. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. That was a typical a type hmm. of the celebration, of the biggest celebration that very soon is going to be taking place to those who follow Christ in obedience. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes. I just want to bring out a practical point that's very important. A lot of people want to believe, but they don't want to wash. Mm. The Bible said they wash and made, washed their robes and made them white. Mm. We know that white is dealing with purity and dealing with Christ and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. But what does, how do you wash? How do you wash? Yes. The blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. But how do we wash? Because Jesus is not washing us without us co without our cooperation. Right. Oh. Go to Isaiah 116. And uh, Pastor, can you read that for us? Isaiah 116. Isaiah 116. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we wash. And um, oh, yeah. right quick, so people can see. Wash you, mm -hmm. make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. So in order to be washed, to have that white robe, the Bible said we must put away evil. Yeah. And put away evil also means to put away sin. That's repentance. That's repentance. Also in Isaiah 4.4. 4, Isaiah. Yeah, can you read that one for me? Isaiah 4.4. 4. And the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Notice it's by the spirit of judgment and spirit of burning, but spirit of burning is also dealing with the issue of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit is convicting of sin and teaching, helping you to wash and put away your sins. Amen. But notice it's very carefully. Wash away the what? The filth. Mm -hmm. of the, the filth deals with also lewdness. It also deals with immorality, also especially sensuality or sexual immorality as well. Right. The Bible said we must wash. But then the Bible said, one more last text, Acts chapter, look at 1 Corinthians 6, 11. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. First, I want you to notice that right quick. 1 Corinthians 6, 6 11. 11 mm -hmm. says, because, yes. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So what does washing take in? Justify, justification and sanctification. Mm -hmm. They're not separate, they're together. Mm -hmm. When we're really washed, we'll be justified because we put away our evil. And we are also going to be what? Sanctified, is that right? Mm -hmm. And who washes us? Revelation 1 5. Can you read that for Revelation me? 1 5. Revelation 1 5. Who Sanctif washes us? Sanctification, Sanctification is being set apart for holy use. That's right. Amen. Revelation 1 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead mm -hmm. and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that love us and wash us from our sins in his own blood. So when it says they were washed in the blood of the Lamb, that means to put away evil. Amen. Washed in the blood of the Lamb means they've been justified and sanctified. Washed in the blood of the Lamb means also that their sins have been what? Washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And therefore, they stand before God without spot. Hmm. And, and that require, that require our own uh, fighting the good faith of the good fight, fight of faith. Fight of faith. That's right. That's what Paul says, right? That's right. We need to. It, it's a. It's a war. It's a war. So, unfortunately, many people have been made them believe that salvation is like a you getting into a car, just crossing your arms. And let Jesus do everything for you. Isn't that the picture that we can get, unfortunately? But no, the Bible presents the 
life of, the, of, a, of a Christian as a fight. It's fighting with flesh, and not with flesh and, and, and blood, but even power on the air. Yes. And the devil is looking for each one of us life. But Jesus on his tender love is calling us to. And he is willing to wash our, our, our sins, our rebellions, our disobedience. But it takes uh, for us to put in practice our free will. Because yes. God doesn't force anybody. That's right. he, when he created us, he put in us the power to make the decision, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. To decide, yes. Isn't that what, what was uh, Joshua said to his people? Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose. We have to choose every day. If we want to follow Jesus, or if we are not going to follow him. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of choice. The one that forced is the enemy. God doesn't force anybody. And see, this, okay. the last point I want to bring out on that point on washing, it says yeah. in Titus 3, 5, it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, mm -hmm. but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Amen. And that's that a, okay. that's that a daily you? experience. Yes. Oh, yeah. Paul says, 1 Corinthians, every day... I die daily. I die daily. I yes, yes to that. God gives us one day at a time. Yes. Isn't that good? Strength for each day. All right. So, should we... Um, and then uh, Patrick brought out the point in Revelation 7, which you're bringing out, that, that last okay. part there. Okay. I want you to make sure you remember because we said it, it points to that special group again. In verse 9, 14, we talked about the washing, but 15 says, Therefore, they are before the throne and serve God. Now remember, they have been washing the blood of the Lamb made white. Therefore, okay. they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. Now notice this very carefully. This is not talking about the great multitude here is dealing with, the, is going back to the issue of the 144,000. How do we know? It says, wash day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. Verse 16 gives you the, gives you, gives mm -hmm. you the understanding. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst anymore, mm -hmm. neither shall the sun light on them anymore, nor any heat. Now, why is the Bible mentioning the issue about the sun lightning on him anymore and any heat if you're talking about the great multitude? That's the, the, that's the fourth plague. That's the fourth plague. And the fourth plague came, and for who? The great multitude? No. That happened with those who were sealed and were made up of the 144,000. That's a good point. But we will see that even the great multitude are not going to suffer no more hunger, no more heat from the sun, uh, because in heaven, everything will be what? Yes. Everything will be good, it will what? be uh, joyful. Well, the Bible described that all the sufferings, and all the death and the tears will be wiped out at the second coming of Christ. And that's the good news. But before we get into that other point, let's watch this. We'll be right back. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today. Welcome back. Pastor Barry, I know you want to present that point again. Yes, that, that part, the part about the saints being uh, absolved is true, but before we do so, we need to, yeah, okay, but I want to just bring this point out right here. Notice very carefully, it says, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst. Now, why is the Bible mentioning the issue about hungering and thirst? Now, we know that through the years of persecution, many of the saints over the centuries were deprived of food, they were deprived of uh, water, but, and also, they were also exposed to heat of the sunlight and everything else. But this is a special emphasis dealing with the 144,000 in the context of the chapter who will go through a time of trouble, like I said before, and when they go through this time of trouble, the seven last plagues will be falling. What does the Bible says? Because notice what the Bible says here in Revelation chapter 16. In Revelation chapter 16, looking here at verse, looking at the plagues, remember what the Bible says in verse 1? 
It says, and after this, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your way and pour out the vials of the wrath of God. Notice this is the what? Wrath of God. And this is the first went out and poured out its vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon men which had the what? Mark of the beast mm -hmm. and upon them which had worshipped his what? Image, image. Which goes back to the warning of the, four, uh, of the three angels, third angel's message. Mm -hmm. But look very carefully again. Go further down. And let's see about the sun. Notice here that the fourth plague. Notice very carefully. And the fourth angel poured verse out eight. his vial, verse 8, mm -hmm. on the what? upon the what? Sun. Mm -hmm. And power was given men to do what? Given unto, the, unto him to scorch men with what? Fire. Fire. And it says, and the men were scorched with what? Great heat. Great heat. Now they had sun, and, and the sun gave them what? Great what? Heat. heat. And blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not. But not only do men who disobedience is the heat affecting, but the heat is also affecting God's saints to some degree. But at the same time, the saints are not uh, under the judgment of the plague, even though they will feel the heat and feel, and, and feel the, the deprivation that mm -hmm. takes place. Now, and then it says, for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Shall mm -hmm. feed who? They're going to feed the 104,000 who went through that time of trouble oh. without an intercessor. We can find that out. And shall lead them, it says, unto, a, unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So God's going to wipe away the tears from the eyes of those who suffered during this time when he sealed his people to go through this time of trouble when his wrath was being poured out. But also God's going to wipe away the tears from the eyes of all saints of the great multitude as well. Okay. Look what the Bible says here in Revelation chapter um, 21. 21. And let's look at verse 4. Mm -hmm. 3 and 4 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Mm. Now, this time about all the saved now. Are uh -huh. you with me now? This is, not, this is 104,000. This is a great multitude. This is all the saved. Mm -hmm. that, and that who will be part of the new heaven and new earth. Is that right? Mm -hmm. He says, And he will dwell with them, mm -hmm. and they will be his people, mm -hmm. and God himself shall be with them and be their God. This is also the fulfilling of the new covenant. Praise God. Because the new covenant says what? He says here, and it says in Hebrews 8, 10, it says, and I, it says here, and this is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I'll put my laws where? In their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a what? A God, okay. and they shall be to me a what? People. A people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, No, the Lord. For all shall what? Know me from the least to the greatest, and I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities, while I remember no more. So in this new heaven, new earth, God says, they should be, he will be our God and we will be his what? People. But this is everybody now. Mm -hmm. So this is telling that more than 104,000 are saved. This is showing everybody being saved. And then look at here. Verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from what? Their, Their eyes. eyes. Their eyes in context, meaning his people's eyes. Mm -hmm. All his people, okay? Mm -hmm. The great multitude included in this one. Mm -hmm. We know he's going to do it for the 104,000 that goes through that time of trouble such as never was, but at the same time, he will do it for all his saints. Wipe tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more what? Death, neither what? Sorrow, nor crying. These shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, and behold, he makes all things new. Praise the Lord. Isn't that a good news? Yes. And the world that we live today with so much violence, tears, death, sickness, yes. the Lord is promising to us all these good things for those who love him, and keep his commandments. So should we go back now again to Revelation 7? I think uh, with, with this thought, we are closing uh, chapter 7 of Revelation. And all this, again, is a, an act of love from a loving father to his people, to a perishing world. Yes. Just one last thought on God wiping away all tears. When that happens, we will. that means that all the trials and disappointments in our life here on this earth, we will see that God had a plan and a purpose and all that he allowed to happen in our lives and we will be praising him for... A, for there, is, there is a point that is very interesting and that is that the names of the tribes, the names of the tribes that make up the 144,000 because each of those names deal with character and did you know that each of us that will be part of this group or even will enter heaven or in a heaven under a name or a character trait of the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. 
Okay? This, this talking about dealing with, we, we, don't, we know we're dealing with spiritual Israel, right. but the names of the sons of Jacob have special significance to us today. Right. And I wanted to just give you an idea. Well, the first one is mentioned in, in Revelation 7. 7 5. Right. What's it say? It's Judah. Of Judah. Right. It says here, the tribe of Judah, 12,000. But Judah means praise. Mm -hmm. All right? Judah means praise. And then the next one is who? Reuben. Mm -hmm. And it says here, and the 12,000 from Reuben. And Reuben's name means a son. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now notice very carefully the next one means, the next name is what? Asher. Is that right? A uh, Gad, I'm sorry, Gad. Uh, yeah, Gad. And Gad's name means a company of sons redeemed. Mm -hmm. Okay? It means a company of sons redeemed. Right. Now, notice very carefully, the next one says, the next one is who? Asher. Asher. Oh, Asher, yeah. Asher. And Asher's name means happy. Okay. Happy after, or if you want to go there. And then next one is Nephthalim. And Nephthalim's name means a uh, wrestling in prayer. Now, mm -hmm. I want you to think about these names, because this is what their names mean. Wrestling in prayer. And then we go again and we find that we have the next one here named Manasseh. Manasseh was sealed 12,000. Manasseh means forgetting self and the past. Mm -hmm. Now, every name means something. It's very important to the plan of redemption. And not only that, uh -huh. every one of those meanings of those uh, tribes mm -hmm. are characteristic or experience that the, pe the, the, that the people of God will uh, experience. Yeah, well, Many of God's yeah. people, like Manasseh, will right. be forgetting self and right. the past. Right. Many of God's people will become happy, who right. used to always be around sad. Uh -huh. Many of God's people will become praise to God, like Judah. That starts it all out. Praising right. God. Praising right. God. Yeah. And then going on, <laughs> Simeon. Yeah. Simeon's name means hearing God's word uh -huh. or hearing God. Uh -huh. There are people today that are in the faith who hear God's word, who will obey what God says. Mm -hmm. And then you have Levi. Levi means join to God. So there are some who hear God's word and are dependent, and there are others who join to God. But all who are saved will hear, have heard God's word. Yeah. All who are saved will have forgot the past and Amen. forgot self. And all who are saved will be joined to God. And then Issachar means servants. Uh -huh. And so God's people who are saved will be his servants. But not only servants, but Jesus said, Henceforth I call you not servants, but I call you friends. Uh -huh. Amen. Okay, so we're going to find that Issachar means servant, but Zebulun means dwelling with. And so Zebulun, Zebulun was also one who used the pen, and they were good writers. And at the same time, the Bible says, though, that the people who come under Zebulun, the 12,000 under them will dwell with. God will dwell with them. Why? And Joseph means add joy and special blessings. So when you go to Benjamin, Benjamin means sons of my right hand. And so we find that when we go through each of these tribes, we find that God's people who are saved will have, will have done something. They will be, it means praise God, a son. Because the Bible says, now we are sons of God. Amen. And it do not yet appear what we shall be. But when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. Mm. Praise God, a son, a company of sons, what? Redeemed, happy, how? From wrestling with God. And as we wrestle with God, we forgot the past. Hearing the word of God, joined to God as heirs of salvation and servants, dwelling with him with added joys and special blessings. And we are now standing at the right hand of God. We are now sons of the right hand. Amen. Man, I, this I is like so. That. Hey, that could be a preaching. Yeah, but this, 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 <laughs> this, 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 this is so. So the awesome, yeah. So the twelve tribes, tribes. don't represent literal twelve literal. tribes of no. Jews. Of course they not. represent the spiritual spiritual Israel, Israel who've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ and have become sons and daughters of God. Each has Remember, a, each has a special character. Uh -huh. uh, to them that believe like on that. Him, He gave them to be sons. Uh -huh. And if we're sons, then we're heirs according to the promise. And amen. one day we'll be sons of the right hand. Amen. Amen. Uh, how about now? Well, should we finish chapter 7? We have should finished. We go, actually, should we go to chapter 8 of Revelation? Yeah, we can go to 8 because we have a, we have a, there are a lot more things, but we don't have time to go into everything that we'd like to go into. <laughs> okay. But because if we did, after we, after we dealt with what their names meant, if we deal with their characters and how they obtained to their name, we will see the experiences of God's people throughout. And we would be that we could be another two two more uh, segments doing that. All right. Okay. So in chapter seven, then uh, it was dealing with the hundred forty-four thousand and the great multitude. And now chapter eight, 
will take us back again. It says, when, it, when the seventh seal is being opened. Mm -hmm. In chapter 8, verse 1, and Brother Patrick, do you want to read? And it's when, a 1 and 2. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Mm -hmm. And I saw, chapter, verse 2, and he said, well, I saw what? Uh, that this will be, well, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Okay, now we're going to get into, uh, the, the, we, we were going to seven seals, there were seven churches, seven seals, now we're going to get into the seven, seven trumpets. Okay, do, do, do you want to keep reading for up to verse 3, and then... Uh, the, we were reading before about the Feast of Tabernacles, right. and how they were living in booths. Right. For seven days. Right. And they had the palm branches. Right. And um, that was a, uh, that took place literally when the children of Israel came out of Egypt on their way to the promised land. Yeah, that was the type. That was the type. Okay. But the anti-type, <clears throat> well, let me, let me uh, just hold that thought but, and then think of how long a time is half an hour. Well, uh, in prophetic time, about a week, about, seven days? Uh, about a week, okay. Yeah, okay. And so this represents the time that we will be dwelling in booths on a journey from this planet representing Earth to the real promised land of heaven. Mm. That's a good thought. Why don't, I, why don't we do this, Brother Patrick? I propose something to you. Mm -hmm. We were coming to the end of this program but in the next program, we're going to get into that because for many people, I know that's something very new, but it's in the Bible. What I want to leave today, I think we need to leave the thought on the mind of our uh, friends out there is that the Lord is so good that he, is, he has been giving us enough information in the Bible to tell us who, who, what, type of pe what type of people are going to be with him in, in heaven. It's going to be happy. It's going to be the old suffering is going to end. But in the meantime, God bless you all. We'll see you on the same channel, same time next week. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.